Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Fun Sisters Boutique. And today we are gonna be doing a vinyl wrap tumbler tutorial on two different style cups. We're gonna be doing the 20 ounce Modern Curve and the 24 ounce Taper, both from Craft Haven Tumblers. Uh, I know I've already done a vinyl wrap tutorial video. However, I wanted to show you guys how to do this on somewhat curved surfaces. I wouldn't go crazy and do this on a 30 ounce cup that has, you know, a larger curve to it or like a 30 ounce traditional, but I mean, it's worth a shot. Also would not do a full wrap on a curved surface either because that would be super hard. <laughs> But anyway, I hope this video is helpful for you guys. I'm also going to show you in more detail how to finish the bottoms, which I didn't really cover in my last final wrap tutorial. So I hope you guys like that. Also, if you haven't joined our Flynn Sisters community group on Facebook, I will have a link for that down below. That is a great place for you guys to connect with me, get some extra help if you need it, if you wanna share pictures of your work that you've um, done from watching our tutorials and stuff. Uh, that is a great place to go. So check that out. Of course, you know, we're gonna have discounts and links for all the products that you see in this video. And I think that's it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first we're going to uh, prep our cup. Right now I'm just taping off the insides to keep it clean. Totally optional, you don't have to do this. And then I'm just gonna lightly sand um, all the surface areas of my cup. After I sand everything, I'm going to wipe it down with some acetone and a paper towel and then we will be ready to spray paint it white with our white matte primer spray. After that, I'm going to make a template um, and this is just going to help me find the uh, true center line of my cup and I'm going to mark that with a pencil. Then I'm going to use my square combo ruler line it up with that mark that I made at the bottom to mark my top and that will give me um, just a nice guideline on where to tape off so I can split the cup. Next we're going to take our masking tape and mask off the section that we're going to be applying the vinyl to. All right, next you're gonna take your patterned vinyl and just kind of try to get a good idea of how much vinyl you're gonna need so you can trim off the right amount. This way you're not wasting like a whole sheet of vinyl on accident or something. Uh, the vinyl I'm using today is just a, a patterned adhesive vinyl that I got from the Vinyl Cottage. I'll have a, sh um, a link for their site along with a discount code down in the description box. All right, next I'm gonna apply the vinyl to the cup. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm gonna leave the backing on for as long as I can. I'm just gonna try and line up that first edge that I put on pretty straight. And you want about an edge, or like a one inch edge of that vinyl overlapping onto the tape. And then you want an inch on the top and about an inch on the bottom. So, Keep that in mind when you're measuring and cutting your vinyl ahead of time that you do want to have that like one inch seam allowance on all ends. I'm just pressing really firmly with my hands and kind of moving along. This is the same way that I would apply vinyl to a skinny or a straight edge cup. Uh, it's just a little bit more challenging because you do have the taper, but as long as you keep your cup straight 
on the table and you apply steady pressure across the surface of the cup while leaving the backing of the vinyl on, it should go on pretty smoothly. I would avoid doing this with any kind of like straight lined patterns or like polka dots or anything that has a pattern that you have to line up because it will get a little bit crooked or distorted when you go along that taper. Okay, after you've got everything smooth, you're just gonna go in with your X-Acto knife and trim off your edges. You're gonna use that tape that's underneath as a guide to cut on the edges on the sides. And I'll show you here in a little bit how I finish the top and the bottom. All right, once you've got all the excess trimmed off, you're just going to remove your tape. And then I like to use that same piece of tape to mask off the vinyl side. And then we'll go into base paint for our glitter and then apply the glitter. Alright, next I'm going to show you how we get the vinyl wrap onto this 20 ounce modern curve. The reason why I like this modern curve is because the curve is, it's kind of gradual enough to where it's not going to be too hard to wrap that vinyl around. And so I'm just starting off in the same way I always would and kind of lining up that edge on the tape. Again, you want to have a one inch seam allowance on all edges. Uh, and really what I'm trying to do here is just kind of pull and stretch until we can get it smooth. And what I've figured out is it's a lot easier if I just try to get that top portion smooth first and then move on into the bottom portion, okay? Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. This was not easy. This took me a good, like, 10 15 minutes um, and really you're gonna see here it's a lot of just smoothing and pulling um, I did have to kind of pull some up a little bit and try it again um, but I mean for the most part it wasn't that bad again you could see here where I just got the top portion smoothed out first and then I moved on into the bottom portion when I moved on to the bottom portion, I smoothed out the center first and then worked my way out from the center. I also used my heat gun just a little bit to get it a little more pliable and it helped kind of smooth out some of the wrinkles. Um, and you guys are probably going to struggle with this. I, I struggled with it myself. <laughs> um, but just keep going, keep pulling and smoothing um, the thing about this particular vinyl is you can really pull at it without it losing too much of its adhesive. 
sometimes with this pattern vinyl if you pull it too much it will it won't be sticky anymore um, this particular brand I didn't really have that problem with which was nice but you do not want to pull too much and you also don't want to apply too much heat okay also um, when you're doing this you want to make sure that you are not using a pattern that like nothing with stripes or polka dots or anything that has to be lined up because you will get a little bit of like warping with the image as you're pulling and stretching it and then if you have some air bubbles, you could just go around with your X-Acto knife and pop the bubbles and smooth them out. Um, and as you can see here, like I, I didn't get any wrinkles in the center. Um, I was able to just kind of pull and stretch everything out and it turned out great. I did take my heat gun again to the edges to pull the um, vinyl over the edges a little bit get it nice and smooth and that was it so next I just trimmed it exactly like I did the first one All right, so next we're gonna apply our glitter. I've already base painted the side that we're gonna be glittering. Um, for this design, I used Harvest Grape and Rust-Oleum Candy Pink. Um, and right now I'm just applying less than one milliliter of epoxy so we could put our glitter on. Uh, and my cup is a little bit warm to the touch, which is gonna help me spread that super small amount of epoxy over it. After I put my epoxy on, I do let it sit on the cup for about five minutes or so, just long enough for it to really smooth out. You want to make sure you don't have any lines in your epoxy before you apply the glitter. For this design here, I'm using Flynn. It's a chunky burgundy purple color from PT Olive Glitters. And I'm holding my cup at a pretty steep angle and I'm very lightly tapping this on. You guys have seen me do this a million times, so I'm not going to get too deep into this. But basically what I like to do is apply my chunkiest glitter first, uh, really sparingly. And then once I have my colors mapped out, I'll just start layering glitter until I get the blend that I like. For the bottom on this one, I'm applying a glitter snob. This is a new color from Peachy Olive Glitters. It's one of the new square cuts. I absolutely love it. So pretty. And this is this square cut is a pretty fine cut of glitter, so you're gonna want to just really take your time on this one. Um, holding the cup at a really super steep angle, um, and again, just really lightly tapping it on. Next, I'm going to come in with a uh, figgy, and figgy is just kind of a finer cut of Flynn, and we're just using this to help us blend that chunkier glitter into that uh, glitter snob color at the bottom. So we're just really lightly sprinkling it in and just kind of helping us fade those colors together. And to finish it off, we're going to apply Glitter Snob again. This time we're just going to really let it rip all over the whole cup. And as you can see, this gives us a beautiful fade. Um, and next for that other cup that I was working on, I'm just doing a solid color. For this one, I used Celebrate. This is a newer color from Peachy Olive Glitters. 
it's just a really pretty kind of like pale pink um iridescent opal kind of vibe super pretty over this coral um, and i apply it pretty generously um to the whole cup make sure you have totally even coverage all right once you've got your glitter applied you're going to want to tap off the excess and then i go in with a small piece of parchment paper and just try to press down any kind of chunky pieces that are sticking up All right, so after our glitter has dried for about two to three hours, you're gonna wanna put a couple coats of a clear gloss acrylic spray sealer or like clear spray paint. Um, and then when I go to epoxy this, I'm gonna epoxy the vinyl side first before I do the glitter. That way I minimize my risk of moving the glitter into the non-glitter side. Um, and over this marble pattern, I am um, using some epoxy that has a micro fine silver additive in it just to give it that kind of realistic granite look. All right, once I've got the vinyl side covered, I go in and epoxy the glitter side. Again, you wanna be really careful, take your time with this so that you don't um, accidentally get any of the glitter over into the vinyl side. All right, so after we've got that coat of epoxy on there, we're gonna let that dry for about four to six hours. I'll move directly into a second coat. Um, and then after that second coat has dried for at least eight to 12 hours, I'll go through and do any kind of sanding that I need to do. To finish off the bottom on this one, I taped off the bottom and I applied um, some saran wrap to the rest of the cup. This is after I did my sanding, by the way, so you wanna make sure everything's nice and smooth. Um, and then I just spray painted the bottom, and I'm, I'm gonna apply a circle of adhesive vinyl that matches the same marble pattern that I did on the side. Um, and this is just a circle that I cut in Cricut Design Space. Uh, I want to say it was like two and a half inches or something. Um, it's that simple. And then for the sides, I cut uh, some vinyl strips also in Cricut Design Space. This is just a rectangle that I cut at 11.5 by 0 0.20 inches. I'm just applying it along that center line between the marble and the glitter. You'll wanna make sure that the sides of your cup are completely smooth before you apply the vinyl. And then just trim the edges with an X-Acto knife. Again, you guys have seen me do this many, many times. <laughs> um, I just wanted to show you what this would look like on a tapered or curved cup. Thank you. 
For this half pattern, I finished it off um, kind of in the same way that I did that other one. Uh, I did only spray half of the bottom of the cup though, uh, just because I wanted to finish this one off a little bit differently. Um, and so you, again, you just tape off the section on the bottom that you want to spray paint. Make sure everything's totally smooth before you do this. Uh, and then mask off the rest of the cup with saran wrap and spray whatever color you want. I'm doing my vinyl strips in the same way as I did the first one. The only difference on this one is I'm going to wrap that vinyl strip all the way around to the bottom. Uh, and then I will trim it to meet uh, the vinyl strip that I put on the other side also. All right, so once I've got all my stripes and my decals and stuff on there, uh, I wanted to do a coat of Quick Coat from Counterculture. This is just a water-based urethane sealer. This is not epoxy. Um, this is just a, again, a water-based urethane sealer. And the reason why I like putting this on is anytime I have these vinyl lines on the sides of the cup, or I'm using like a metallic vinyl for my decal, um, this just helps seal everything in and ensure that I don't get any epoxy bubbling up that vinyl. Uh, you'll want to put any kind of excess back into the bottle if you have any. Just make sure it doesn't have any like glitter or contaminants in it, obviously. Um, and then after this dried, I did a couple coats of epoxy and then we were done. So I hope you guys loved this tutorial. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and as always, if you guys liked our video, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell button so you don't miss a new tutorial. We do upload every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks for watching. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also, be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course, subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.